So our first presentation is by uh, Hinula Carson Williams from Ireland and focusing on the use of proverbs and sayings in contemporary advertising campaigns. The floor is yours, Hinula. Thank you very much, Rui. I'm delighted to um, be part of this colloquium and I want to say parabens to the whole team. Uh, to Rui, the two Ruiz, Marinella, all the technical staff. And um, it, it's nicer to be in Portugal, but this is definitely um, <clears throat> second best and a good second best. So as Rui said, my um, presentation is um, from mouth to hand and uh, my source are um, proverbs in uh, campaigns that I've um, noted in Belfast in Ireland over the last few years, and some thoughts on how these um, leaflets, mainly leaflets, um, influence how proverbs are transmitted, how they are learnt or mislearnt. So in any literate society, um, there is an interplay between proverbs in literature and, in no, and those in oral tradition. But for many decades, as Wolfgang Mieder showed in his book of 1975, Das Sprichwort in Unserer Zeit, and soon after in his and Barbara Mieder's article in the Journal of Popular Culture, Tradition and Innovation, Proverbs in Advertising, which was published in 1977. Proverbs and other sayings have been circulating in newer written contexts. These, it may be assumed, must have an influence on how they are learnt. One of these newer contexts is in the publicity for various campaigns. Copywriters and the commissioning organizations must judge proverbs to be effective messengers for their purposes. And besides the initial impact that they hope the chosen proverbs will make, they may consider that, that, there, that there is every chance that their use will have long lasting resonances for their campaigns because the proverbs themselves will continue to be heard in the future. My paper looks at some mostly 21st century leaflets for campaigns using proverbs, which were all noted in Northern Ireland, particularly Belfast. While some of the campaigns were local, others covered all of the United Kingdom or were international. Actions speak louder than words. It was a campaign that um, the Salvation Army, that excellent organization, uh, and they used it on their annual fundraising appeal in house to house collections. And this must have reached hundreds, if not thousands of households. Actions speak louder than words is a well chosen proverb for the Salvation Army because it truly depicts the support that they give needy people in practical ways. That particular proverb may also act as a prompt for householders to do something even if readers were previously unaware of the proverb, its message is obvious. The same can be said for the proverb on the leaflet of a completely different organization, War and Want Northern Ireland, now known as Self Help Africa, which is a local charity working with people in the poorest areas of the world. Their leaflet appealing for volunteers says, many hands make light work, and picks up the key word in it, hand, immediately below, give us a hand, together, as you see, with a photo of many hands, and again, within the leaflet, give us a hand at street collections, give us a hand in one of our shops, and give a hand at a fundraising event. In this case, the leaflet was available in its own 18 shops throughout Northern Ireland, as well as in various public places. 
In both these examples, the proverbs were used in a straightforward way with no deviation from their standard form. And the, the third example of this uh, uh, a proverb being used in its original form in a campaign was one for the charity Sightsavers International. The proverb chosen is every picture tells a story, which is superimposed on a photo of a suffering baby. In this case, the photo with its proverb fills the entire back of an envelope. Unlike the hand-delivered house-to-house collection, posting the appeal means that the proverb would have been seen by many more people apart from the addressee, thus increasing its chances of being memorized and learnt. The Salvation Army appeal had no illustration, but the illustrations in the last two appeals certainly add impact to the proverbs and their messages, and most of the campaigns that I'm going on to mention consist of a proverb and a picture. To readers who are already familiar with these proverbs, either using them themselves or simply through hearing them, such leaflets must surely reinforce their knowledge of them. The more frequently a regular proverb is seen, it would seem the more likely it is to be learnt. And the more a proverb is used in print in its regular form, in the same way as it is heard in various contexts, rather than being altered, the more likely it is to be learnt. For other people, they may be relearning proverbs that they once knew. In a few cases, copywriters have not plucked inspiration from the current proverb pool, but have come up with lesser used ones. The results of Tradecraft's Thai Fu, Who Picked My Tea campaign are coming in now. In it, they use the proverb, knowledge is power. Even though I would deem this proverb to belong much more to literature than oral tradition, and therefore to be much less widely used and so less likely to be taken up. As we know, to those who have not come across particular proverbs before, proverbs do appeal due to their poetic features like personification and alliteration, devices which have caused proverbs to be perpetuated through, through the ages. Actions speak, and the baby can't speak, but the photo tells the story for it, and the proverb is all the more memorable for having the photo. How effective is all the more member how effective a proverb in a campaign is in aiding the memory of it and in its reuse in new oral contexts can obviously vary. And obviously, the combination of illustration and proverb can work effectively as well as the actual choice of proverb. Sometimes the illustration has to be altered to suit its locality although the proverb remains the same. One proverb, cooperation is better than conflict, the moral of a fable appears in Burundi and instead of mules, which are not unknown in the Rift Valley, goats are shown in the picture. The language is Kirundi. It first appeared uh, with mules in the UK on a peace poster and it's still circulating. Sometimes the proverb is altered to suit a particular campaign. A safe home is a theme which has cropped up in a few different leaflets, such as one, an advice leaflet for older people, published by Women's Aid. The leaflet's title is Home Sweet Home, or is it? So the everyday proverb has been extended to suit the campaign. It is likely that such a use of this simple proverb will bolster its meaning. On the other hand, the different way in which another familiar proverb is altered by the same organization is less likely to have such an impact on its future usage. Here the proverb, home is where the heart is, 
is altered by changing one word, heart to hurt, turning its original message on its head. In terms of the campaign, it is certainly effective and it no doubt reminds people of the original proverb. For those who were unaware of the original proverb, it could only be learnt in the altered form. While there is some chance that such a proverb with such a satisfying rhythm, let alone its topical relevance, might be taken up and reused, the same cannot be said for Amnesty International's UK twist on another proverb. Like knowledge is power, it too is more likely to be seen in literature rather than heard. They used this proverb on an envelope that was posted out for a campaign. And uh, the, the, the way they used it, it said, the crane is mightier than the sword, based on the pen is mightier than the sword. And it was used in an appeal to make greetings cards for prisoners of conscience. A colorful and eye-catching appeal, but probably with little lasting effect on proverb learning. In nearly all campaigns which employ a proverb, the proverb usually headlines the publicity, and in this position it would attract most attention. There are occasional exceptions, however, for instance, in the Northern Ireland Education and Library Board's leaflet. Here the title, Is Your Child Safe? A Guide for Parents and Carers, um, is on the outside, but inside we find a proverb better safe than sorry, which echoes the leaflet's title and its message. Obviously, an inside position would have much less exposure and so less likelihood of being learnt or relearnt. As well as familiar proverbs being used in campaigns and so affecting how they are learnt, new proverbs are circulating. Extinction Rebellion Northern Ireland have, in 2019, been Publish, publicly distributing a flyer headed on one side, there is no planet B, climate action now. It, it was apparently used in a speech by Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the United Na Nations in 2016, and more recently by President Macron to the United States Congress in 2018. When high profile people use proverbs, it can only add to their being taken up by others. This new proverb is derived, of course, from the expression, there is no plan B. Besides new and old proverbs being circulated and therefore spread through campaigns, various other fixed phrases appear. Business as usual is driving extinction is the headline on a recent flyer about Hooper Swan protection, which was distributed in Northern Ireland in November 2019. While it seems that the phrase was popularised by Winston Churchill in the opening stages of World War I in 1914, it really resounds with people in Northern Ireland due to its use at damaged premises during the recent conflict. Give my head peace, appeared on a Belfast City Council flyer with noise hotline numbers. This colloquial exhortation was also the title of a very popular satirical comedy show and probably the reason for the council's choice. Between the two, the show and the flyer, the expression has become noticeably more widespread in speech. Again, from Belfast City Council, comes this flyer, Women Take the Plunge, with Swim Ireland and Swim Ulster. In general, such expressions, unlike proverbs, provide less scope for alteration, thus they are learnt in one set form. There are exceptions, however. One day I'll be as dead as a parrot is derived, of course, from the proverbial comparison, as sick as a parrot. Amnesty International UK flyer about leaving money to them in your will. Just as the circulation of proverbs increases when high flyers use them, it probably does too when they appear in campaigns 
with photos of celebrities reporting to stay them, as that one did with Michael Palin, the traveler. In the belief that they will resonate with people, strike a familiar chord, or at least be arresting to those who have previously not come across them, organizations deploy proverbs. A byproduct of all this campaigning is that proverbs are certainly being relearned and possibly even learnt, with in turn some being reused in oral form and so aiding perpetuation. My paper has probably even reminded some of you of proverbs lying dormant and led to their relearning. So, obrigada. Thank you very much, uh, Finova. Uh, your very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I think you gave us uh, new insights into this question. Uh, unfortunately, we will not have time for questions and answers, which would be very, very interesting. 